Welcome to the Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by Play Picks and the Lines. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined as always by my counterpart on the East Coast, Nate Weitzer, with a small slate tonight, uh, four games, I believe, in the NBA tonight. Nate, you got a great article up at playpicks.com with some of those best bets, some DFS strategy. Uh, we did have a gift card winner last night, actually two of them, uh, got 234 correct points uh, combined between the uh, the Bucks and the Clippers, there Clippers blew out the Bucks. Uh, poor showing there from from Milwaukee, but uh, so we'll get those gift cards out to you guys. Have a couple more options, uh, or at least one more option this week for that. And as always, if you do need a DraftKings account or FanDuel account, head to dkpicks.com or fdpicks.com. Find all those local listings. Uh, jump in those comments tonight and like and subscribe to that page. Nate, let's jump into the lines and uh, talk about some of these games tonight. What we're gonna do with them. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to play some DFS tonight when we see how shorthanded those Clippers might be on a back-to-back. We know how shorthanded the Magic are. The four games we have, uh, the Wizards are also on a back-to-back with Bradley Beal still questionable. They're plus three at home against the Hornets. The Nuggets are minus four and a half or five at home against the Sixers. The Clippers, as you mentioned, minus 11 and a half <clears throat> against those Magic. And the Suns right now minus six against the Hawks. So, Josh, which of those four games strikes your fancy? Oh, man, I don't love most of them. Um, I'm probably going to look to tease some stuff tonight, to be honest. Um, But I am going to start looking at the poor Lando Magic uh, game against the Clippers. Uh, We will see Terrence Ross back, so maybe see if we can find some of his props. I I don't have any of those available right now as we're shooting this, but – Someone has to score for the Magic. Uh, You mentioned that potentially we might not see um, Kawhi tonight. We're going to see Paul George back, I believe. Um, And I believe we should see uh, either Pat Bev or uh, Ibaka back, one or not both of them. Um, But either way, I like what I'm seeing from the Clippers in terms of their bench stepping up a lot. There has been a Luke Kennard sighting. Uh, At this point, he's got uh, in their last 10 games or so, he is is hitting two and a half threes uh, on 70% shooting from deep. So he's really finding that touch. And then you've got Terrence Mann coming in, filling in for uh, that Lou Will role. Um, on the season, Terrence Mann is in, you know, he's only averaging about 17 minutes a game, six points, three boards, and one and a half assists. Um, look at the last six games where he's ramped up those minutes to 28 a game. He's at 16 points, seven boards, two assists, and no dip in his efficiency anywhere. So I really like what I'm seeing from him. Um, and as I mentioned, you know, the Clippers are on that six game win streak. And I really think that uh, they're in a position to continue to try to you know, make clear that they are serious for the playoffs right now. Um, in that six game win streak, they have the most points per game at 121. Um, and they've also upped their defensive rating a ton to be able to get uh, the best net rating in the league during that time. Um, they're shooting the ball incredibly with top three in all major shooting categories from from deep and all over the floor. Um, and they're rebounding the ball and not turning it over as they have all season. So, um, you know, regardless of a Kawhi sits tonight, I think you're going to see Paul George. And I think he's going to have continue to have plenty of help. I, I'm not great uh, feeling great about any totals with Orlando right now. You saw an incredibly choppy game with them against the Lakers once they lost all three of their best players. Um, they will have Terrence Ross back and Chuma uh, Okiki is looking really good right now as someone who I think can step up. So maybe try to find some some pl- some props there, but I'm staying away from totals. And if anything, I'm going to take that Clippers game and possibly tease it down with uh, one or two of the games we're going to talk about here in a sec. You said Terrence Mann stepped up over the last six, right? Clippers six-game win streak. That's our man right there. Yeah, no, he's not filling the Lou Williams role. He is Lou Williams 2.0 in terms of being able to actually attack the rim. That I mean, they didn't blow out the Bucks last night, but they separated in the fourth because of Terrence Mann. Literally, absolutely just knifing through that dif- defense to open up open threes. And then Luke Kennard got a little uh, – Heat check going. Yeah, he probably will carry that over. So the biggest angle for me in this game is just those guys stepping up. <clears throat> Once we know whether Paul George or Kawhi play or not, uh, at least likely one of them sits against a poor Lando team. So I think those guys are going to be great DFS plays. That's the angle for me. I, I don't know if they cover 11 points. I mean, Orlando, I think, is covered in both games so far, or they barely missed against the Blazers since since their fire sale. So yeah, they're a little disrespected. We've talked in the past how these G League guy, G League fringe guys, sorry, Chuma, uh, really ball out when they get their opportunity, and they're really good defensively uh, with that effort, which kind of makes it difficult to beat them by over eleven points. That being said, the Clippers are really hot, and yeah, I like if you can tease them down to minus seven. I do. I would feel confident there. <clears throat> um, couple games I feel confident in. 
I feel I, I feel good about the Nuggets tonight. I know it's creeping up to minus five. That's something I would like to tease down, maybe pair with the Suns to get them at, at small spread as well. But I think the Sixers, while they've been good without Embiid, six and two, best defensive rating. I think the schedule is a bit of a mirage. They have wins in there against the Warriors without Steph, the Lakers without anyone. Um, I think that the Nuggets' success is not a mirage. They are the number one offensive rating in the league uh, last 10 games, and they just added Aaron Gordon to ramp that up. He didn't even have to do much, and they dropped 126 on a pretty good Hawks defense. Um, I like a Nuggets win. Once again, there's player performance doubles that are an easy cakewalk, and FanDuel, Michael Porter Jr. You score 15-plus in an 11th straight game and shooting 51% from three in his last 10 games, and you can get him to hit just two threes, which he's done in five straight, and get plus 125. Um, I like I like MPJ. I like the points in this game, definitely, because while Denver's first in offense, they're 26th in defensive rating uh, in that eight-game span. You look at Philly, five and two against the over as a road dog. Just got Seth Curry back. They average 115 and a half points per game with Seth. That's a four-point increase there. They are averaging 119 points per game. Their last 12 against the West. So I think that the pace continues to ramp up without Embiid. I think that they don't really have any answers for Jokic on the other end. Uh, Dwight Howard might get himself ejected again or something. So Denver will continue to score, probably get the win, and hopefully go over, which which a parlay there would get you about plus 180 at DraftKings. Nice. Yeah, I'm going to continue to ride the MPJ wave until someone figures out he's going to be continuing to score 15-plus points. Uh, Aaron Gordon doesn't seem to be uh, someone who's going to be cutting into that. They're going to be playing different positions, and you'll see a lot of slashing from Gordon uh, with a couple threes put up from him. So uh, I'm feeling a lot of what you're saying there. I do, I do think uh, Philly might be in trouble in that they're – defense turns their offense on it sort of ignites it i'm not sure they're going to be able to get those turnovers against denver if they're playing intelligently as they have been for for a while now in offense so i uh, feel that game um and then you know another game uh that I'm, I'm looking to take advantage of uh you mentioned atlanta got pounded by uh, denver at home and I, I think you know atlanta's in phoenix tonight and and i think that is going to be the continued trend for atlanta is getting pounded by west coast teams that are that are really good we, we kind of saw a little bit of disparity there uh, between Atlanta and the top teams in the West and that loss. And it, it's really, you know, it's made more clear and prominent when you back it up against the fact that the teams that they beat in their previous, you know, nine out of 12 game winning streak, you know, wins at nine out of their last 12, um, there was no good teams in there, uh, right? The only good teams that they played um, was a heat without Jimmy uh, Buckets. The, the LeBron got hurt in that game against the Hawks, so pretty much the whole game without LeBron and AD. Um, and then you've got the Stephless Warriors, every other team that they beat in those nine wins, bad you know bottom of the but like literally bottom five of the league right oakland uh oklahoma city uh you know cleveland all those teams so while they were playing really well on defense um you know in, during that time in their last three they've really come back down to earth they're dead last uh, actually in their last four rather where they're one and three dead last in defensive rating um you know and, and so i think you're seeing a lot of struggle from them meanwhile Phoenix continues to not struggle. They play well, very, very well against uh, good teams. Eight and two against the spread in their last 10 against teams above 500. Um, at home, they're 14 and six against the spread over the year um, as the favorite when they're at home. So re really like what they're able to do there. And, um, you know, in, in the month of March, they're third in point differential. So they are beating teams. Um, they're plus 9.3 per 100 possessions. Um, so beating teams by almost double digits at this point. Um, you know, and, and they're the only team in half court offense and defense in the top five, uh, real top 10, almost top five in both, um, which is what you expect from a Chris Paul team that's come in and shown this team how to play a lot better. They're going to need to beef up their, their, their uh, rebounding against the Hawks tonight, but I still feel comfortable at minus six and a half would even take it around minus seven and a half. Um, feeling good about the, the Suns great fourth quarter team able to pull away from the Hawks who, who I don't, I think are, are, are highly overrated right now based on how, you know, they've been beating awful teams so far. Yeah, I, I got to wonder if they put something on film that these other West Coast teams have been able to capitalize on. I mean, they were cruising right along, right, going for their ninth straight win under McMillan against the Clippers. Then all of a sudden they just get stomped in the second half. Yep. And since then, yeah, they have not gotten off the mat. Uh, the Suns with Chris Paul at the controls obviously know how to exploit any of those weaknesses. They're well rested. And I do think they take care of business tonight. Um, I would just look at, 
<clears throat> teasing it down, as you mentioned. I like pairing it with the Nuggets. And a, another player performance double is Chris Paul, 20 plus points, gets you plus 360 in a win, which is just tempting odds. Yeah. He's not necessarily a reliable scorer in that regard, but going up against Trey Young, who's an exploitable defender and somebody who kind of brings out the best in the opponent with uh, some of his disrespectful offensive play, perhaps CP3 gets gets that 20 tonight. Yeah, I see him. I see him owning Trey for sure. I don't think Trey will spend too much time on Chris Paul, so there's gonna be some mismatches on there for for Phoenix. Yeah. Um, and speaking of point gods, Russell Westbrook coming off the first ever 35, 10, and 20 plus assist game in league history. We we prompted that game with what did the Wizards have besides Westbrook? It feels out nothing, and it didn't matter. They go over again by a wide margin. They're now 16 and 7 against the over at home, uh, 11 and 4 when underdogs at home, and 8 and 3 against the over when playing on back to backs. They've been pretty good on back to backs, 8 and 3 against the spread as well. Westbrook averaging 27, 11, and 10 yeah. on his five appearances on zero days rest. We don't know if Bradley Beal's going to play at this point. <clears throat> if he does, <clears throat> you got to feel great about the over. Uh, I think they will continue to score. Even though Charlotte has been great defensively, especially in their last four since LaMelo Ball went down, their eighth in defensive rating, uh, and dead last in pace by a long margin in that span. Washington, though, we know, brings out the most uh, in their opponents in terms of playing it with pace. Uh, they can attack the paint with impunity. Westbrook has led them to get 61 point paint points per game in their last three. And they're number one in both free throw attempts uh, produced and allowed. So that's just w the secret sauce for their overs, right? The Hornets still getting 113 points per game on the road. Until we know if Beal is playing or not, uh, the over is the safest bet for me in this one. I think if Beal sits, I don't think Westbrook can produce that type of magic again. Uh, and I would feel confident about the Hornets, who are 6-1 and one in the division this year. Um, and and, and the, the Wizards are 1-6 in, in their division. Yeah. So I would take the Hornets at a small spread with a rest advantage. And um, I would look at Westbrook props still if Beal yeah. is out because that, that man is, is on a tear. Yeah, I, it's it's the fourth. This, this is the fourth wonky game. I think yeah, the value that we're finding here is whether or not Bradley Beal plays. That's going to you know, be the sort of deciding factor of um, you know do we do we feel comfortable about Washington? Because I feel comfortable uh, with Washington having Brad Beal with you know rested legs, um, but I, I would also consider uh, Westbrook pops honestly regardless. So I, I feel that, um, but I'm staying away from that one. I'm feeling uh, you know teasing uh, basically teasing at least two if not three of those games. Uh, down between the, the, the Phoenix Suns, the Nuggets, uh, and uh, the uh, the Clippers, as we mentioned, they're getting a little bit better odds. Um, you mentioned uh, DFS, Nate. Anything you want to get into for for tonight? Some people you're looking at. Well, obviously Westbrook is the priority spend if you can get there. You can get there with some value on his own team. If Beal's out, <clears throat> we're looking at. I mean, also Davis Bertans, Daniel Gaff Gafford got injured last night, so their front court depth is thin. Chandler Hutchinson, former Bull, got 18 points in 25 minutes last night. He's a minimum price guy. So is rookie Denny Avdicha, uh, our boy from Israel. <laughs> um, so that's some value in the, in the Clippers game. I, as we mentioned, yes, love Terrence Mann, Reggie Jackson, Luke Kennard for value. We'll see how much of a boosted role they might get depending on who sits. Other side, look at the Magic front court, Chuma. Ukeki and uh, Momo Bamba, definitely good plays on that side. The only the only guy I'm liking in the Hawks Suns game because of their, their defensive prowess is Trey Young, just at his current price tag. I think he will be gunning as well. Yeah, he's gotten and, double doubles in his last two against Phoenix. So yeah, he's ramping up. His price tag is not caught up. And in that Nuggets Sixers Sixers game, I'm looking more at the wings as we mentioned MPJ. Danny Green's been really reliable for the Sixers lately. And I would look at Seth Curry, too, as a pretty cheap play. Yep. And uh, I think George Hill's sitting out again tonight, but really can't wait to see what he brings to that team he's in. Uh, Nate, that's all the time we have. Good amount of uh, stuff here on a small slate. 
Um, so we'll be looking at watching all those games tonight and uh, definitely looking to pounce on some uh, quality DFS plays uh, with uh, you know only a few games going. Uh, and we will be back again tomorrow and later in the week with another gift card. So stick around. Make sure you jump in those comments tonight and tell us who you guys got. Like it, subscribe. And we will be back tomorrow. So as for tonight, happy betting. <laughs>